Welcome back, Echo Circle. It's really nice to see you. Today, I make no apologies for my topic. I stand on what I'm saying. God is a DJ. I know this is a pretty kooky thing to think about, but I want to try to explain to you why I'm so obsessed about frequencies and emotions and how it links to your consciousness. Let's dive in. What is the universal song? I believe love is key. God is in everything because God is spirit and the God in me recognises the God in you. But what blocks humanity is the shadow. This is programming from governmental thoughts and systems. I like to see them as the pharaohs, guardians that are trying to divide, trying to control, trying to manipulate a mindset to block consciousness. Namaste actually means the God in me recognises and honours the God in you. I see us as one. I see us as part of one big brain think tank, if you like. And I might see things differently, but my love for you sees that you are part of me. We are the body. Shamayim is an ancient Hebrew word that means heaven. It gets a little bit watered down, though, with English particularly, and with religious teachings. We see heaven as just one space, when in fact Shamayim means realms. So what is the key to the realms? I believe the key is a frequency, and that frequency is love. One day in my meditations, I saw the word love circling around and blinking up, and love became evolved. Picture that in your mind, look at the letters, and see that as you embrace love, you will evolve into the spiritual being that you truly are. So why is the key rejected so much if the key is so exciting and can take you to other realms? It's the shadow that I spoke of earlier. You know, if I give you love and love is not common to you and you don't feel like you deserve love or you haven't been loved in the past and you're still suffering in trauma, then you may sabotage and push love away. This is what's happened. All of humanity has felt cut off, divided, separated, which is darkness when we're away from the light. And to graft back into the light feels uncomfortable because it's not how we want to be. When we are close to light, our hearts mirror back the darkness in us that needs shifting and changing. Now might be a really good time to discuss what love is. There are so many songs about it, aren't there? But in this fallen realm, I don't think love is presented as it truly is. I'm going to say a bold statement that Torah restores your aura and we were shown the way and this is it, to love God, which is source, to love self and love others as you love self. This is the way. But how can we love others as we love ourselves if there isn't much love there inside of us for ourselves? If we're wandering through self-loathing, for example, or we feel so cut off from source that we actually have thrown baby out with bathwater because of governmental systems and religious teachings. I'm here to say that to graft back into light does not require a label Identity in who you are as a fractal of source is all you need to grasp onto. You are light. You are a light body. You are a fragment. You are part of the bigger picture. This is consciousness. When I like to speak about source, I see source as energy, spirit in everything. So source is in that tree. Source is in that body of water. Source is in each piece of food that you eat. Source is in your neighbour, your friend, your mother, your father, your brother, your sister. Source is in that person that you really can't stand, believe it or not. We've all been cut off and separated. That is what this realm's about. It's a huge lesson because God is conscious. God is that DJ of the universe, the one song, singing over you calling you back to love. 
The alchemy of it was to give his son because of the spilling of blood. This is magic. You also are a son and a daughter, so we have to graft back in. Nothing you can do can put you back. All it is is believing, seeing with your eyes closed. You're the temple stone. Rise up and vibrate at a higher state. So how did things get so messy? Did you know that we can only see 1% of the light spectrum around us? That's quite blind, in my opinion. How is it that we see in others things that aren't actually there? It's because we see through our own lens. Your trauma glasses, that's how I like to think of them. As an energetic tree, we have trauma roots and we have higher thoughts and frequencies. This is your healing journey. Your spine is your rod. You're the energetic tree and you choose what you run off, what energies you run off. This is the fruit that's spoken of. So I'll give a quick example. As a young child, I was hurt very badly by a man that I should have trusted. And my lens became to blame all men for that behavior. This was my shadow. But healing has taught me and love has taught me that a lot of men run in the spirit. They have God in them. And so my lens has opened. I see that love is the key to finding a relationship that I can trust and honor. Namaste, the sovereignty in me recognizes the sovereignty in another man instead of blaming them for the sins of my ancestors. You might be getting to know me by now that I always like to give a practical takeaway, something that you can put into action. I think this is how we learn. So I'd like you to write a list of the people that are around you. Focus into the energies that you have with each relationship. And be honest with yourself. Who irritates you? Who prickles you? Now look inward. Is there something in that person that you're too afraid to recognize in yourself? Is that your irritant? Is that your thorn? Is that something that needs working on? Is that person your mirror? Get ready for some change. When you start working on yourself in this process, you will consciously shift rapidly. We stop rejecting everyone that's been sent to us to show us what's in our heart. Most of us that think we're operating in love, if we break it down, we'll realize that we usually are operating out of a trauma root. We've learned this behavior. Love is foreign to all of us because we've been cut off, separated, divided by our shadow, by the darkness. When we step into conscious mindset that love is the relinquishing of all manipulation and all control, that then becomes unconditional love, which means I love you without expectation. I love you without a payback. I love you because I see myself in you. I love you because you're part of the bigger picture. I love you and yet I set a boundary for your behaviours. I love you because love requires me to love you. Loving your enemies happens in this way. The greatest alchemy is to die for another. Weigh it up in this way. Do you love your enemy enough that you would die for them? These are really big thoughts to ponder and ask yourself, have I evolved into love yet? Love is the highest frequency. Now I want to speak into how the light hits differently. And in a song, there are many notes, right? So think of the notes as the frequencies of the universe. So you're one note, I'm another. Some notes together clash and don't sound so good together. This is us in this realm. I like to picture things using fractals and you'll often hear me speak of sacred geometry. When you can see a prism, you'll understand why we are crystalline beings at a higher frequency. That is a temple stone. So when the light passes through you, you get fractals. This is us when we think, when we speak, when we meditate. 
we are co-creating using the spirit. When you understand that light hits people differently, you'll see that light prisms come through sacred geometry and form different patterns, different shapes. Cognitively, this helps me understand that I don't have to press my mindset, my belief system onto another. They're seeing it from a different perspective. Light's available to all of us. How does your heart mirror? Your heart is the door. Your heart is the open part in your system that allows for the light to come in. When someone breaks your heart, the light gets in through the crack. Often our pain becomes our purpose. You've heard me speak on that before. But what about if my heart's still unhealed? Then I'm seeing you through the crack in my heart. I'm not seeing the big picture. I'm seeing the darkness around me. When I open my heart to evolve in love, I'm seeing that Torah restores my aura. My heart of stone becomes a heart of flesh. And that flesh is crystalline, gold-coated, bouncy back kind of love. This is you and me. We are conduits. Yes, yeah, see, the mirror bounces. I see myself in reverse. Everything in this realm is inverted. I'm seeing what I don't like in myself and you're showing it to me. This is how the heart mirrors until your heart's filled with love. How do you then sing at a higher frequency? I'm going to give you lots of tips and tricks on lifting your vibratory level, which really helps, but mostly it's mindset. It's shifting out old trauma emotions and pulling in new ones as fruit of the spirit. This is your journey, though. Only you can clean up camp. This is your camp. This is your tent. This is your temple. This is your body. One thing I do know, though, that we need to change our mindsets. We have definitely been trapped in a realm of bitterness, hence the word maritime law. Bitter law, ma sonics, the sonics, the frequencies of ma, bitterness. If you have any bitterness in you coming from your ancestors' programming, it's time to shift it out now and evolve with the key of love. I wish you well on your journey.